This video is not necessarily about the Honda Acti, which there's a ton of videos out there on, on YouTube showing what they are and how to get them. But this is more for the person who's a little frugal, who's waiting for their Acti to come in or maybe just bought it and they're saying, what do I do now? I wanna make it look pretty cool. I wanna make it my own and get some accessories and I don't wanna break the bank. The Facebook groups are really, really helpful with finding parts and ideas to do things, but some people will kind of steer you into buying stuff that's a little too expensive. So I'm gonna talk about what I did for mine. I'll talk about what I paid for each thing or from what I remember paying. And I'll discuss where you can save a lot of money and where there's some things that do cost some money, but it's, it's worth every single penny. So stay tuned. Three, two, one. So first up, what's the goal? What are you shooting for with your truck? For me, this is my second K truck. My first one had a little bit of rust. I painted it, I Raptor lined it. For the second one, I wanted a Honda Acti. I wanted it to be very clean and mechanically sound. And I didn't want to paint it. I wanted something that had limited rust and um, was just in good overall shape. And I wanted to make it look cool. I wanted to make it look basically like a matchbox car from my childhood. Or, or more for those in my age range, the micro machines. So that's what I was going for and I'm really happy with it. So let's dive in. First, let's talk about, I mentioned, I didn't wanna to have to do paint. One thing that people overlook with these K trucks, they're all 25 plus years old. They come in and they're flat, matte white, a lot of sun damage. You can polish them for less than a hundred dollars. And I'm no car de detailer. I bought a really cheap car polisher on Amazon it came with some default little sample kits of polish and I went to town and I polished this paint job. Is it perfect? Heck no. But the neat thing with these trucks is that you can learn how to do stuff from polishing to changing timing belts and water pumps. So I went for as much of a high gloss finish as I can. And I should know I've not washed this in a few weeks. So it is as it is. There's bugs on the front. I didn't even wipe it down for this video. So you're seeing it in its natural state, but it definitely has more of a high gloss polish to it. And, um, and it shines up really nice. So if you have a powder blue or a white K car and it's faded and you think you need to paint it, try polishing it first, get a little polisher and, and, and do the roof or something. And it may come back to life. There's a bunch of YouTube videos covering it. Next, I did the California mirrors. I thought they look cool. You have to order them from Japan. And I did order those straight from Japan. You can buy them stateside. I think from Japan, I paid like $80. If you get them stateside, you're going to pay probably like $120, $150, if I recall. But the California mirrors just look meaty um, and make it look a little bit more like a truck. The next thing that we did is the bed mat. The bed mats from Tractor Supply. Not only is it from Tractor Supply and it's like $55, if you find one that's ripped, they'll more than likely give you a deal. I think I paid $20 for my bed mat and it's heavy. It's about 100 pounds, but it works great and it keeps the bed protected. The bed was in great shape. It still is and I want to keep it that way. We also have the bed box. The bed box is not easy. You could go to a Tractor Supply and buy a $300 bed box. It's a little bit shorter than your, your average bed, but I didn't want to do that. My only advice for finding a bed box, um, other than doing Rubbermaid, is to keep an eye on Craigslist. There are some odd size bed boxes that pop up and I found my aluminum bed box for 50 bucks. So I can put all my tools and stuff in there. Um, if I go to a grocery store, I don't have to put them in the cab with me. I can throw it in the box and it's awesome. And as far as securing it, I, I simply used a couple bungee cords. That's all that's securing it. So I can pop it in and out as needed. So that that is a deal. There's keep an eye on your local uh, Facebook marketplace and Craigslist and uh, look, try to pay attention to the measurements or ask people how wide is it? Because it's the width, especially most of them will overshoot the sides. So you got to find something that's a little bit smaller. Next to the wheels and tires, huge topic on, on Facebook groups. Everyone is asking, especially new people to k trucks, what fits? These are 15 by 8 zero offset Vores wheels. Also come as MST wheels. You'll see them both. I purchased these on eBay. They were on sale and I paid $400 for the rims. I made the center caps. The, the wheels come with center caps and I made little tokens to replace the centers 
with Honda logos. So I just made that on a 3D printer. They're wrapped in 195-45R15 Toyo Extenza tires that I bought online. Um, I want to say I paid $200 for the tires. Um, and then I had a, a buddy mount them for me and, and balance them. A lot of people sell you a tire and wheel package and they'll sell them to you for anywhere from $1,000 to $1,500 for this. If you want to get cool wheels that you like, look around on Marketplace, look on eBay, find what you want, do your homework, and buy the tires separately. Um, if you don't want the headache, absolutely go through a dealer and pay, pay the larger fees. But um, if you're looking to save, this is an area to save. As we talk about tires, we now need to go into suspension. These will work without a lift, but you really do need to uh, update your springs. Um, there's a little bit of rub. I had to take the mud flaps off to make it work, but I replaced the springs. So let's talk about springs. On most of these trucks, there's a pair of springs up front. Again, people selling accessories will happily sell you a pair of, of progressive springs for these trucks for 200 to $250 and they claim they're calibrated for these trucks and, and built for them. I don't really believe it. Then there's another group that will go to Summit. I bought mine from Summit Racing. A lot of people will go with, I think they're the QA1 Progressive Springs with Summit. They're like $70 each and you get a pair of them. I had those and it was too firm of a ride. It, uh, for the weight of these, you're not getting the value out of the progressive. The spring is already compressed halfway when you, when you mount them, and it just wasn't worth it. So I actually returned them and purchased the Summit branded 250-pound uh, non-progressive springs, and they've been great for me. I, uh, I weigh about 200 pounds. I've had passengers in here on and off, and this, is, this gets all road use, and it's been a great ride. No problems. Those springs are actually a little bit cheaper. When we talk about putting the springs on, you need special spring compressors. Uh, if you have regular spring coil compressors, it probably won't work. Um, a lot of the guys had pointed us to, um, to a tool on Amazon. It was like $35. I'll link it below. And um, I, was, I bought it with intentions of just returning it when I was done, but I ended up keeping it. And I've, like I said, I replaced the springs a couple times and uh, it's been a great little tool. So I kept it, I'm keeping that in my toolbox. Um, and it rides great. It, it doesn't give it a ton of lift, but it gives it just enough to get rid of the, the small amount of rubbing that there was. As far as alignment, I did a manual alignment. I YouTubed it. I didn't feel it was so out of whack that I needed to go to a shop. There's a little bit of toe in, um, but the tire wear, and, and now I have probably 10,000 kilometers on here or 7,000 miles. Tire wear is great. It drives great. So, so I'm happy. I'm not touching anything else on that. Next up is lighting. All the light bulbs in this vehicle have been changed to LED. I don't know what it is. Like I said, this is the second K truck I've had. Um, it has a small alternator, small battery. And in both vehicles I had, if I had the headlights on and I was at a stoplight and maybe the blower going, the whole car, the idle would just drop down to almost nothing. It just felt like it was really hesitating and trying hard to keep up with everything running. When I changed all the bulbs out with just bulbs off of Amazon, again, I'll link stuff below that I used, it just took all that pressure off the electrical system. Uh, truck idles beautifully, no matter how many accessories I have going. I do not have AC in this vehicle. I didn't feel I needed it being up in New England, and I have no regrets on that. But yeah, changing the lights has been awesome. Um, up front, I also did LED lights, but this is a 94 Acti. In 95, they changed the um, trim of the headlights from orange to clear, and I liked the look. So I actually did replace my, my lower trims to the headlights to, um, to the clear. So this actually is set up more like a 95 uh, plus versus a 94. All right, let's, let's talk interior. First things first with these. Just like the outside, the inside's the same. They come super dirty, caked on dirt all kinds of nastiness inside. Take as much of the interior out as you can and clean it. 409, simple green, whatever you like to use, give it a good scrubbing. A lot of it will come to life. That includes the headliner. A lot of the doors will become, have a lot of sun damage and there's no way of fixing that with the cleaner. So what I used is I used the interior trim paint. Um, I took the panels off, I gave them a paint. Um, I'll, I'll link the color 
or note the color down below. It was a perfect match to Honda. I didn't do the greatest job prepping it, but I don't need perfection. And six months later, it's holding up great. Yeah, you can see some scratches and stuff, but I'm, I'm pleased with it. Another necessity that I feel all the trucks need are cup holders. Now, my Acti doesn't have AC, so it goes all the way down to the, the floor. And I purchased this $15 cup holder off of Amazon. I think they're on eBay too. There are a lot of guys out there who have made some 3D, both metal and plastic cup holders specific to the Acti and to the other K vehicles. And they're really nice and everything. Um, for me personally, I like to put other things, not just cups in my cup holders. I'll put my sunglasses, maybe my phone for a minute. Um, some change or something loose. So I needed something that was enclosed, had a, a larger hole that connected the two. So I had more options and I really didn't want to mount anything on my dashboard. Next up is the stereo. As you may already know, these generally come with an AM only stereo that has a different band in Japan than here. So it's really not going to work. For my Acti in 1994, it has one speaker and the passenger side door um, while there's speaker place hole and trim on the driver's door, there was no speaker. Um, I got some cheap speakers and nowadays the single din stereos with Bluetooth are like 30 or $40. If you're an audiophile, I'm sure it's not going to sound good, but if you're just simply looking for some tunes and some Bluetooth connectivity, it's great. Um, so I think all in for about $60, you have a stereo and some tunes and it looks factory. I'll also note that when you're wiring it, I didn't get a special adapter. I'm, I'm comfortable doing my own wiring. But even within the same year of these trucks, and this, this was with my Suzuki also, the wiring harnesses can differ. So sometimes things that are clearly ground aren't actually ground, and it may be a switched ground. So once you open everything up and see your actual wiring, do some research on the groups and make sure you know exactly what each wire is. One of the final things that I get a lot of compliments on is the seat covers. Um, these are seat covers straight from Japan. Um, I imported them. They fit beautifully. They have kind of a badass look to them. They also have the pocket underneath, which is great for storing things like registration and whatnot. I may actually have an extra set. So if you're watching this video and you've gotten this far, let me know. Um, I'm importing some other stuff from Japan and I may actually buy another set of uh, seat covers. And then also some of the things that need to be fixed. I've noticed guys going out for full new glove box doors because the glove box door has fallen off. This can be fixed very easily with a little bit of Velcro and a screwdriver, really. And uh, you're able to restore the, the glove box to its working state without having to actually buy any parts other than using some stuff hanging around the house. So make sure to kind of look at things before you go buying. See if you can figure out how it works and fix it yourself. I mean, you save a lot of money doing it that way as well. One of the things that does cost a little bit, a good amount of money for some plastic, really, is the shift linkage. Uh, Will Power sells a shift linkage kit for, I think, about $65. And at first, when I talked about being frugal, I said, you know, that's a lot of money. Is it really worth it? Um, these shifters can get really sloppy. And based on the feedback, I said, you know what? I'm going to do it. I'm going to splurge on this. So I, I, I ordered the kit. And I have to say, I would do it again in a heartbeat. I have perfect shifting, nice and tight, like it's brand new. And um, it just makes driving this so much more fun. It really is like a go-kart. So definitely recommend doing the shift linkage kit. It's an actually easy install. You pop off some of the trim. It takes about an hour if you just kind of step through it. There's a bunch of YouTube videos out there for how to, how to replace the shift linkage. Um, it's fun, it's easy, and the reward it's very rewarding. And then last thing is got to be the steering wheel. Another area that you could spend a fortune on steering wheels. A lot of people like to get Momo steering wheels or, or something along that line. Most of the time they get them used, they're $100, $120. Some people spend up to $200. When you get the steering wheel, you also need to get the, the hub that's made for this car. And people spend $80 to $120 for that. So all in, they're looking at like $300. My steering wheel and my hub, I think I'm into it for $50. I bought this steering wheel, which is probably for a gaming system. It's a 350 millimeter, not a 320 millimeter. I got it on eBay for $30. It's great. It doesn't feel cheap. It feels meaty. The fabric on the really hot days is loosening up a little bit. 
but for 30 bucks, this is a Honda Acti. This is not a Ferrari. So it's awesome. And the hub is probably a, a, a bootleg hub, but I got that for $20 again on eBay. Um, I'll link the exact model you need for this car because there's different types. And I ha actually bought a couple cheap hubs um, before I found the right one that worked. And then lastly, the horn button was blank and I just printed off a Honda sticker to kind of make it a little more branded. I will note that the 320 millimeter steering wheel I had, which is the exact same as this, just slightly smaller, made a huge impact on being on my steering. And it just made it really hard to steer with the big wheels. Going from a 320 to a 350, I still get all this great leg room um, and it steers a lot easier. So if they're not as common, but if you can find a 350 instead of the 320, I would recommend going with that, especially if you have large wheels on, on your truck. I'll also note for a really cheap but cool and interesting upgrade, paint your gear selector. Literally take a little bit of white out or white paint, rub it across the top, and then clean it with some mineral spirits, and it just gives the whole car a little bit more of an accent. Mine's dirty. I do a lot of work in this truck, so it's got the fingerprints going, um, but it gives it a nice little character. Again, it was something I found on a Facebook group. And I love the idea. It's inset just enough that when you wipe, I actually used a toothpick to put the paint in there. And then I wiped it off and cleaned it up. And it's just been, it looks really cool. That's something that's not stock, but definitely a neat little accessory. Um, in case any of you ask, I also have the, the flare. I'm too cheap to buy a replacement flare. As you know, these trucks don't usually come over, come back over here to America with the flare. So I literally printed a red cylinder on my 3D printer and plopped it there. Um, Someday I'll buy a flashlight or something to put there, but uh, I, for now, I'm good.